12 taboos in Brazil and weird things that shock the whole world. Brazil has lots of cool stuff like soccer, hot dances, and amazing nature. People from all over the world want to see these things. But before you pack your bags and head to Brazil, there are some things you should know. Sure, Brazil has beautiful landscapes with lush green forests, colorful birds, and stunning beaches. And who wouldn't want to experience the excitement of Brazilian football matches or the energy of their fiery dances like samba? But here's the thing. Brazil isn't just about the fun stuff. It has some rules and customs that might surprise you. These rules can be a bit strange and might make you feel uneasy. Some tourists get scared because of them. For example, did you know that in some parts of Brazil, it's common to kiss people on the cheek when you greet them? That might seem weird if you're not used to it. And in Brazil, it's also common to eat some unusual foods like fried insects or exotic fruits you've never heard of before. Then there are the laws. Some of them might seem strict or strange to visitors. For instance, in Brazil, it's against the law to drink alcohol in certain public places, like on the streets or in parks. And if you're driving, you have to wear your seatbelt at all times, even if you're just going a short distance. So while Brazil has so much to offer, it's important to think carefully before you decide to visit. It's not just about the fun and games. You need to be prepared for the unexpected and be open to experiencing new things, even if they seem a little strange at first. Number 12. It's forbidden to use the OK symbol. In many Western countries like the US, people often make a circle with their thumb and index finger and raise their other fingers to show that everything is good or OK. It's a simple gesture that's widely understood. However, if you're in Brazil, you need to be careful with this sign. Why? Well, in Brazil and in some other places like Mediterranean and Latin American countries, this innocent gesture carries a different meaning. Instead of indicating approval or agreement, it's seen as something rude or inappropriate. Believe it or not, it's associated with private body parts, so using it can be offensive. But that's not the only gesture to watch out for in Brazil. Another one is the sign that looks like devil horns, often used by fans of rock music to show that something is cool. However, in Brazil, this sign isn't seen in a positive light. Instead of thinking about music, people might get angry and think that it means something bad about someone's wife. So if you're visiting Brazil, it's important to be aware of these cultural differences. Avoid using gestures that might be harmless in your own country, but could cause confusion or upset in Brazil. Being respectful and understanding of local customs will help ensure a smoother and more enjoyable experience during your time in Brazil. Number 11. It's forbidden to go to Snake Island. Off the coast of Brazil lies a place that strikes fear into the hearts of many. Ilha da Coimada Grande, better known as Snake Island. Despite its stunning natural beauty, this island is shrouded in danger due to its infamous inhabitants, some of the most venomous snakes on the planet. Imagine an island where every step you take could lead you into the path of a deadly serpent. That's the reality of Snake Island where the average density of venomous snakes reaches a staggering five per square meter of land. This isn't just a problem for the occasional visitor, it's a nightmare for anyone who dares to venture onto its shores. The lack of natural predators on Snake Island has allowed the snake population to explode, with estimates ranging from 2,000 to 4,000 golden lancehead vipers, along with other highly toxic snake species. These snakes aren't just scary, they're lethal. A single bite from a yellow-headed pit viper can spell certain death for an adult human, with symptoms ranging from excruciating pain and swelling to organ failure and even muscle necrosis, all within a matter of hours. But the dangers of Snake Island extend beyond its venomous inhabitants. Legend has it that the last human inhabitants, a lighthouse keeper and his family, met a tragic end in 1920 when they were overrun by snakes that infiltrated their home. Some say these snakes were introduced by pirates to protect hidden treasures, while others attribute their presence to natural migration patterns. Regardless of their origin, the result is the same, a deserted island ruled by serpentine terror. To protect both visitors and the delicate ecosystem of Snake Island, the Brazilian government has implemented strict regulations banning unauthorized access. Only a select few, such as Navy personnel and accredited researchers or filmmakers, are permitted to set foot on its shores. They brave the perilous terrain in the name of science and exploration, 
shedding light on the mysteries of this forbidden island while ensuring its secrets remain undisturbed. So if you ever find yourself tempted to explore the wonders of Brazil, remember to steer clear of Snake Island. While its allure may be undeniable, the risks far outweigh the rewards in this treacherous haven of deadly serpents. Number 10. It's forbidden to show discomfort with food. When you travel to a new place, you might come across foods that you're not used to. It's okay if you don't like them, but in Brazil, it's important not to show it. Brazilians have a deep respect for food, and they expect you to show the same respect. That means even if you don't like something, you should try to eat it without making faces or complaining. Showing discomfort with food is a big no-no in Brazilian culture. In Brazil, people have a particular way of eating too. They don't use their hands to eat, Instead, they use knives and forks. When they eat, they hold the fork in their left hand and the knife in their right hand. And if you're walking around and want to eat something like ice cream or gum, it's considered rude for adults to do so. Even when it comes to foods like sandwiches, hamburgers, pizza, and fried chicken, you'll need to follow the Brazilian way. That means using paper towels to hold the food and even using a knife and fork to eat pizza. It might seem strange if you're used to eating these foods with your hands, but it's important to respect Brazilian customs when it comes to eating. Number nine, it's forbidden to flaunt your wealth. Here's something you might not know. Brazil has a lot of crime. It's one of the places where crime happens the most in the world. That's why it's really, really important not to show off your money or fancy stuff when you're out and about. If you've got nice jewelry, like rings or necklaces, it's better to leave them at home where they're safe. And when you're carrying your phone or camera, make sure to keep them in your pocket and hold on to them tight. Some parts of Brazil have so much crime that tourists are too scared to even take out their phones to make calls. There are a lot of robberies and other bad things happening in Brazil, so it's super important to always be careful. Especially in places where security isn't very good, it's better to be safe than sorry. So try not to draw attention to yourself by showing off expensive things when you're out in public. Remember, it's not just about protecting your belongings, it's about keeping yourself safe too. So take extra precautions and stay vigilant when you're exploring Brazil. Your safety should always come first. Number eight, do not enter the slums. This rule isn't just a suggestion. It's a crucial piece of advice that could mean the difference between life and death in this country. The slums here aren't just impoverished neighborhoods. They're territories controlled by ruthless criminal gangs where violence lurks around every corner. Picture this, you, a stranger, inadvertently step foot into their domain, immediately raising suspicions and signaling danger. These gangs operate with impunity and any perceived threat, real or imagined, could lead to dark consequences. Scan through YouTube today and you'll still find a plethora of videos with sensational titles like Images Too Shocking for TV, many of which originate from Brazil. These videos offer a grim glimpse into the reality of a country teeming with diversity, but marred by violence. Among them are recordings of harrowing hostage situations, where the only recourse for law enforcement is often a sniper's precision shot to the perpetrator's forehead, ending the ordeal in a pool of blood. Yet such interventions aren't always flawless. A slight miscalculation, and it's the hostage who pays the ultimate price. Unfortunately, this outcome has become disturbingly routine in Brazil, where the police force is often criticized for its incompetence and corruption. Instances of police brutality and misconduct are shockingly common occurrences. It's not uncommon for officers to stop cars at gunpoint, brazenly extort money from innocent civilians, or resort to violence without justification. In Brazil, encountering such abuses of power can feel as routine as brushing one's teeth in the morning. But here's the chilling truth. In Brazil, the line between law enforcement and criminality often blurs. Imagine being stopped by police in the dead of night, forced to remove your shoes, and subjected to vicious beatings with a baton, all in the name of intimidation and extortion. The ordeal culminates in a demand for hush money before you're allowed to flee in a state of panic. In this country, navigating the perilous landscape requires more than just street smarts. It demands an acute awareness of the inherent dangers lurking within its very fabric. Rule number eight isn't just a cautionary measure. It's a lifeline in a world where survival often hinges on a single misstep. Number seven, the mysterious Amazon forest. 
In this South American country, security measures are often justified by simplistic explanations, such as the need to control nocturnal activities to prevent criminal behavior. However, it's not just the urban slums where precautions are warranted. The mysterious expanse of the Amazon rainforest presents its own set of formidable challenges. Spanning a staggering 6,700,000 square kilometers, with Brazil claiming 60% of its territory, the Amazon is unparalleled in its vastness and complexity. Before venturing into this wilderness, it's advisable to undergo survival training. For in the event of getting lost, these skills could mean the difference between life and death. Even armed to the teeth, survival in the Amazon alone is a daunting prospect. The first hurdle one encounters isn't the scarcity of food or water, but rather the indigenous tribes that call the forest home. These tribes, shrouded in mystery and often hostile to outsiders, view trespassers as potential prey. Armed with rudimentary weapons and an intimate knowledge of the terrain, they instill fear in even the most well-equipped intruders. Yet humans are not the only threat lurking in the depths of the Amazon. Legendary creatures, both real and mythical, pose a constant danger. From swarms of mosquitoes and armies of aggressive ants to colossal spiders with leg spans measuring up to 24 centimeters, the forest teems with lethal adversaries. While some creatures like the giant spider may not actively seek human flesh, their venomous bites can prove fatal. The infamous piranhas of the Amazon, though not as bloodthirsty as portrayed in Hollywood films, pose a genuine risk, especially to the injured. A mere scratch can trigger a frenzy of feeding, underscoring the precariousness of survival in this ecosystem. However, it's the apex predators that inspire the most trepidation. Jaguars, the largest cats in the Americas, possess formidable bite force and lightning-fast reflexes, capable of dispatching prey with ruthless efficiency. Encounter one in the wild, and your fate hangs precariously on the whims of chance. And then there are the anacondas, colossal serpents capable of suffocating prey many times their size. Their presence alone is enough to instill fear, serving as a reminder of the inherent dangers lurking beneath the Amazon's verdant canopy. For the uninitiated, the best course of action is to heed the warning. Stay away from the Amazon unless you're a seasoned researcher. Opt instead for the vibrant cities where the dangers are of a different nature and the camaraderie of fellow urbanites offers a safer form of adventure. Number six, land of only women. Gentlemen, prepare your pens and paper for I'm about to unveil a haven that promises to be paradise for single men, no matter how long they've been enduring solitude. Allow me to introduce you to the enchanting town of Nueva do Cordero, nestled in southeastern Brazil, a place where a surplus of beautiful young Brazilian women beckons single men to join their ranks, as the majority of local men are already spoken for. Situated approximately 90 kilometers from the bustling capital of Belo Horizonte, in the verdant state of Minas Gerais, Nueva do Cordero is renowned for its abundance of stunning women. Mentioned in hushed tones across Brazil, this town conjures images of joviality and feminine allure, with over 90% of its population comprising the fairer sex. Among the 600 residents, a staggering 300 are unmarried women of working age, in this unique enclave, where men frequently venture out in search of livelihoods, returning home only sporadically, the women have shouldered the responsibilities of the town's upkeep, from tending to the fields to orchestrating construction projects and leading religious ceremonies. These women have forged a thriving community, independent of male intervention. While there are still a handful of men residing in Nueva do Cordero, their numbers pale in comparison and their contributions to the town's affairs are minimal. Some are husbands in name only, appearing at home fleetingly throughout the year. Yet despite their self-sufficiency, the women harbor a longing for companionship and partnership. Following media coverage highlighting the town's yearning for male companionship, a wave of eager suitors expressed interest. However, prospective husbands should be forewarned. The women of Nueva do Cordero hold steadfast to their principles and demand equality in all aspects of life. In this egalitarian society, men seeking to join their ranks must be adept at domestic chores, including dishwashing, laundry, cooking, and yes, even toilet cleaning. Equality reigns supreme, and no task is deemed too menial for either gender. 
To this day, Nueva do Cordero remains one of the world's most extraordinary places, where tales abound of elderly women who have lived their entire lives without ever experiencing the touch of a lover. Number five, being late is considered a beautiful culture. Do you recall the exasperating sensation of waiting for someone who's tardy to a rendezvous? In most cultures, being punctual is revered and lateness is often met with disdain. But in Brazil, the paradigm shifts dramatically. Here, arriving early to an engagement might just earn you a few raised eyebrows in a sense of social ostracization. As one astute observer of Brazilian culture aptly put it, those accustomed to a fast-paced lifestyle will find themselves at odds upon setting foot in Brazil. BBC correspondent Lucy Bryson experienced this cultural quirk firsthand when she attended a party in Rio de Janeiro. Arriving mere minutes after the appointed time, she was taken aback to find the host's living room strewn with untouched snacks and refreshments. The host, still in the midst of a leisurely shower, quipped, I'm not ready yet, embodying the laid-back beach-centric ethos that pervades Brazilian life. Indeed, factors like congested traffic or impromptu conversations with friends on the street often lead locals to disregard punctuality. This relaxed attitude extends to social gatherings, where party plans are frequently derailed by a collective disregard for timeliness. In Rio de Janeiro, in particular, it's customary for hosts to deliberately delay the start of festivities, treating tardiness as a mark of politeness rather than a breach of etiquette. However, Brazilians do draw a line when it comes to certain engagements, such as meetings and business appointments. Recognizing the importance of promptness in professional settings, they make a concerted effort to arrive on time. Yet when it comes to social events, festivals, or casual meetups with friends, the concept of punctuality takes a back seat. It's not uncommon for attendees to saunter in at least 30 minutes behind schedule without eliciting so much as a raised eyebrow. In Brazil, the notion of time is fluid, dictated more by the ebb and flow of human interaction than the ticking of a clock. To fully immerse oneself in Brazilian culture is to embrace this rhythm, to surrender to the allure of Brazilian time, where the journey matters more than the destination, and where the art of tardiness is not just tolerated, but celebrated. Number four, tinvited nudist beaches. While Brazilian authorities maintain strict regulations against acts deemed harassing or obscene, they adopt a surprisingly laissez-faire approach when it comes to nudist beaches. Across five states, Paraiba, Bahia, Espirito Santo, Rio de Janeiro, and Santa Catarina, Brazil boasts a total of eight official nudist beaches. Among them, Praia de Tambaba reigns supreme as the oldest and most renowned, having embraced naturalism officially since 1991. Its picturesque landscape beckoning visitors from far and wide. For many tourists, the concept of nudist beaches may initially evoke a sense of intrigue or even discomfort. However, in Brazil, such destinations are embraced as part of the cultural fabric. Nudist beaches offer a liberating environment where individuals can shed their inhibitions and embrace a sense of freedom in their natural state. Yet amidst this freedom, it's paramount to prioritize privacy and respect. Visitors to nudist beaches must exercise discretion and refrain from taking photos or videos of others without explicit consent. Respecting the privacy of fellow beachgoers is not only a matter of courtesy, but also a reflection of the golden rule. Treat others as you would wish to be treated. In essence, nudist beaches in Brazil serve as sanctuaries of self-expression and acceptance, where individuals can bask in the beauty of nature and revel in the joy of uninhibited camaraderie. So whether you're a seasoned naturist or a curious newcomer, remember to tread lightly, respect boundaries, and embrace the freedom of the Brazilian coastline with dignity and grace. Number three, drink beer alone. In Brazilian culture, beer is more than just a beverage. It's a catalyst for social connection and camaraderie. Brazilians view drinking beer as an opportunity to engage in lively conversation, forge bonds with friends, family, and colleagues, and create a vibrant atmosphere of shared enjoyment. Unlike in some cultures where drinking alone may be common, in Brazil, the idea of sipping beer solo is virtually unheard of. For Brazilians, the true essence of beer lies in the act of communal consumption where each bottle, typically around 700 milliliters in size, becomes a vessel for fostering connections and building relationships. 
When enjoying a beer, Brazilians often pour themselves a small cup and extend the gesture to those around them, be they friends or strangers. This practice exemplifies the inclusive nature of Brazilian social culture, where sharing stories, laughter, and good times is the norm. It's no surprise, then, that Brazil ranks among the world's leading consumers of beer and alcohol. From lively carnival celebrations to other social gatherings and festivals, beer and wine are ubiquitous, adding to the festive atmosphere and creating lasting memories for all involved. The combination of Brazil's strong social culture and the diversity of its beer market has contributed to the widespread popularity and consumption of beer and wine throughout the country. So whether you find yourself at a bustling bar or a lively street party, know that in Brazil, the enjoyment of beer is as much about the people you share it with as it is about the drink itself. Cheers to that. Number two, passionate about music and dancing. Visitors often find themselves affirming that Brazilians seem to be born with an innate ability to move to the rhythm of music. The music scene in Brazil is incredibly diverse and vibrant, mirroring the rich tapestry of its culture. Take, for instance, the iconic samba music and dance. When people think of samba, Brazil immediately comes to mind, especially during the lively carnival festivals, which have become an international symbol of the country. Samba is a genre of music that seamlessly blends infectious rhythms with intricate dance moves, captivating audiences right from the start. The history of traditional Brazilian music is a fascinating tale of blending sacred and secular elements rural and urban influences, indigenous, Portuguese, and African cultures, as well as the fusion of traditional and contemporary styles. This unique fusion has given Brazilian music its distinct and unmistakable character, with samba standing out as its quintessential representation. But samba is just one facet of Brazil's rich musical landscape. Other dance styles like foro and capoeira, a mesmerizing blend of martial arts and music, also hold significant cultural importance. Dance for Brazilians is not merely a form of entertainment. It's a way of expressing and celebrating their traditions, festivals, and cultural identity. For locals, dancing is ingrained in their daily lives, serving as a means to convey joy, excitement, and the warm hospitality that characterizes Brazilian culture. Whether it's the rhythmic beats of samba echoing through the streets, or the energetic movements of capoeira practitioners, music and dance are integral to the Brazilian way of life. Number one, it seems that nature pays a lot of attention to this South American country. Alongside famous landmarks like Snake Island and the vast Amazon rainforest, Brazil boasts one of the world's most peculiar natural phenomena, the Pora Roca wave. This extraordinary event occurs only once every two years, typically between February and March. During this time, massive waves reaching heights of six to nine meters surge forth for several minutes, engulfing everything in their path, houses, trees, and even animals. While not classified as a tsunami or a toxic wave, the destructive force of these long waves rivals that of their better known counterparts. Twice a year during the same period, the Atlantic Ocean churns up waves that travel up the Amazon River, creating the longest and most powerful wave on the planet. Brazilians refer to this phenomenon as Pora Roca. Originating from the Atlantic tides, this spectacle occurs as the waves meet the mouth of the river, where shallow waters and narrow funnel-shaped channels amplify their force. As the tidal waves approach, typically at dawn, tourists and surfers can hear the sounds of monkeys and other animals signaling the incoming high tide. Upon reaching land, the Pora Roca wave wreaks havoc, causing destruction to buildings and vegetation along the riverbanks. Despite the risks, there are adventurous souls who relish the thrill of surfing on these monstrous waves. Predicting the occurrence of estuarine tidal waves like Pora Roca is exceedingly challenging. Factors such as wind patterns and river depth fluctuate seasonally, making it difficult to anticipate when these events will happen. In 2003, a particularly notable Pora Roca wave lasted a staggering 37 minutes traveling over a distance of 50 kilometers and leaving behind a trail of destruction that led to widespread poverty and displacement among affected communities. And that concludes our journey through the 12 taboos and weird phenomena of Brazil, a country rich in culture, diversity, and natural wonders. From the bustling streets of Rio de Janeiro to the mysterious depths of the Amazon rainforest, 
Brazil never fails to captivate and intrigue. But amidst the beauty and excitement, it's essential to remember the cultural nuances and precautions necessary for a safe and enjoyable visit. Whether it's respecting local customs, navigating the dangers of Snake Island, or immersing oneself in the vibrant music and dance scene, Brazil offers a tapestry of experiences unlike any other. Now it's your turn. What have you learned from our exploration of Brazil's peculiarities? And what insights will you carry forward into your own life? Share your thoughts in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more fascinating explorations of culture and beyond. Until next time, obrigado and adeus.